librarian at the Westmont Public Library. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite things to do as a family, which is baking. And I grew up baking these Norwegian Kringla cookies with my mother, and she grew up baking them with her mother, and her mother grew up baking them with her mother. And now I bake these with my own daughter. And we did actually have an opportunity a few years ago for my mom to come out and visit us around Christmas time. And the three of us baked them together, which was a lot of fun. I wish it's something I could do with my mom and my daughter together every year. But baking and cooking together as a family is a really great way to get stories started and to talk about your family history. So today we're gonna start with putting together the ingredients for the Norwegian Kringla cookies. And you'll wanna plan this out because the cookie dough does need to be refrigerated for at least an hour. Sometimes it's nice to just mix them up the night before and then be ready to go with the baking the next day. I'm gonna to try to do this all in one day today, so we'll see how that goes. So, I already have a lot of the ingredients measured out and the mixer ready to go. You can do this without an electric mixer. You can do it with a hand mixer or you can do it by hand, of course, um, if you'd like to. So the first thing we're going to put in is one cup of sugar, which I've already measured out. And we're gonna add to that three quarters of a cup of Crisco for shortening. I like to buy these sticks because it has the measuring right on it, the little ruler, so it makes it so much easier and less messy to add it in. So it's nice to have a spatula handy so that you can just add that in. And then we're gonna go ahead and cream those ingredients together. And when we say cream, that means to blend them until they're creamy. So we're gonna go ahead and put the paddle into the mixer. And here we go. I also go ahead and use my spatula just to pull everything together to get things off of the paddle and to get them off the sides of the bowl. And give it one more quick swirl. Okay, so now you can see that these ingredients are creamed together and we're ready for the next step. So the next step is to add eggs one at a time. Always good to add your eggs one at a time. Um, I bake enough that I go ahead and I just crack them right into the pan. But if it's something you're not comfortable with, then go ahead and crack them in a separate bowl so that you don't get any of the eggshell. And then we're gonna go ahead and mix that in. And now it's starting to turn a light yellow color. We'll go ahead and add the second egg. And as before, I recommend that you use your spatula just to get things off the sides of the bowl and off of your paddle or your beaters, just so everything gets combined well. Give it one more round. And now you'll see you have a nice yellow creamy batter starting to form. Okay, so our next step is to combine our dry ingredients. So I already have three cups of flour in this bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and add another half cup. So three and a half cups total. Now I was always taught to use the back end of a butter knife to level off your 
your measuring cups, make sure you have just the right amount. So that's three and a half cups of flour. And now to that, we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. So I already have one teaspoon measured out. And ever since I was a kid, I thought it was fun to measure baking soda because it comes with this handy little flap so you don't even have to use the knife. And you just run it against that to get your leveled half teaspoon. The other thing we're gonna to add to this is one teaspoon of salt, which I already measured. And then we'll go ahead and move those items out of the way. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make sure that we have a little more than three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Now, sometimes it is hard to find the whole fat buttermilk, which is what this is. It really makes the cookies taste a lot more rich um, if you get the whole fat buttermilk. But I have made it many years with the low fat cultured buttermilk and they're still delicious. Um, you can also use the trick of using regular milk and adding vinegar to that um, to make something that's similar to a buttermilk if you don't have that handy. But if you can find the full fat buttermilk, I highly recommend it because it really makes for a delicious cookie. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is add some of the flour, salt, baking soda mixture. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate between the dry ingredients and the wet ingredient. And then when we come to the end of that, we will be ready with our dough. I should have grabbed a spoon, but I didn't, so. I'm going to go ahead and just use the knife that I use to level off the flour and just use that to give a quick mix. This is just so that things are combined before you go ahead and start adding them. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of the flour mixture. And once all that loose flour is combined, then you can go ahead and add a little bit of the buttermilk. And blend. And now we'll add a little bit more flour and we will alternate back and forth. Okay, now when you have everything mixed together, you're going to have a pretty sticky batter. This is what it's going to look like for you and you'll be able to see that this is a fairly thick and sticky batter. So what we're going to do is go ahead and scrape this out of the bowl, wrap it in some plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. Um, it's very sticky when you're trying to roll it out, which is what you're going to do. You're just going to roll with your fingers so you don't need a rolling pin, but you're going to need a nice clean work surface and a little bit of flour to help you with that and then just a butter knife. So take a break, get your dough in the refrigerator and then we'll see you for the next step. Okay, now we're taking our dough out of the refrigerator and you can see it's kind of sticky. <laughs> and I have my daughter Allie here to help me out because as I said before, this is a family project that we've been doing for generations. So. What we want to do is take some of the dough and put it out on our flour work surface. We have one of these like Tupperware plastic pie dough sheets. I don't know what we call this, um, but you can just do this on your countertop too. We want to make sure that we have some flour on the surface because this is very sticky dough. And then we're going to go ahead and put the rest of the dough, wrap it up, put it back in the fridge for later. And Allie's gonna start with a little bit of the dough and then tell you how to roll it out. Also make sure that you have flour on your hands because otherwise <laughs> it will stick to your hands. All right, so we're just taking off a little bit 
And with our floury hands, we're going to start just rolling very lightly. As you can see, I'm not pushing down hard and I've got my fingers splayed out. And then you can start using two hands to try to make your dough roll out kind of in a pencil shape. Or what do you like to say? A snake? Yeah. <laughs> or a worm? <laughs> if you need, if it starts to stick, just put a little bit more flour. You don't want to use too much flour or your cookies end up tasting like flour. So we're just trying to get it like the width of a pencil or a little bit thicker. Depending upon how much dough you have, your pencil may be very long. What we like about this mat is it has measurements right on it. So every block here is two inches and that goes this way as well. So we can both work at the same time, but you can just grab a ruler or you can eyeball it. So you want each one to be about six inches or if you have this Tupperware one, you want it to be about three squares long. And you're just going to take a butter knife, a regular butter knife, it doesn't have to be a fancier knife, and then just cut it at six inches. And if you have any dough left that's under or over, then you can just discard it and use it next time. And then here's the fun part. You're going to make the shape of a figure eight on the pan. So you pick it up by both ends and then you do a quick twist and then bring it around and pinch together at the bottom. You don't need a lot of space in between the cookies because they do puff up, but they don't really puff out a lot. So, you know, just even having an inch in between them is fine. And then we're just gonna keep, oh, keep oh, going. I, I forgot I still had ones to cut right here. Thanks, Sally. looking a little bit like this. They don't have to be perfect figure eights, just <laughs> to where you like them and they look like figure eights. So this is a typical Christmas cookie in Norway. It's very traditional. It's not super sweet. And yes, we normally have sweet tooths and we like very rich and sugary things. However, Sometimes, especially at the holidays, when you have a lot of rich foods that you're eating, having something light is nice. And it goes really well with a latte or hot chocolate. So it's, you know, basically a pillowy soft sugar cookie. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep going, rolling these out again with a very light hand if you press too hard, you're just gonna smush it. And then you have very flat looking kringla. Do you remember a couple years ago when Nana was out here and she really taught us how to do it? Mm-hmm. Nana's the master cookie maker. <laughs> yeah, whose who's figure eights were the best? Mine, yours, <laughs> I think my mom's were the best. I think Ellie's and Anna's were the best. <laughs> but, as Allie said, they don't have to be perfect. They're going to taste good anyway. <laughs> Normally, we throw on some music and we just talk and have a good time. It's a nice time to spend with a family member. You can tell stories. Like I've told Allie stories about when I would be in the kitchen with my mom making these cookies. And I'd talk about my brothers so she'd hear stories about her uncles. And, and then someday I hope that Allie will make these with her friends or with a family of her own. All right, and then once we have the pan full of cookies, then we're gonna put them in the oven 
for eight to 10 minutes. You don't want them to turn brown on the edges or even at the bottom. You're really just going for a very light golden. Um, they, don't, they don't really change color a whole lot, but they will puff up. And I'm gonna let you fill that pan there. And we already have some that are in the oven. So we're gonna take those out and we're gonna show you what to do with them. Okay, and now we've taken the pan of cookies out of the oven. They're still hot. And Allie's gonna go ahead and put a little sugar water on the top. Um, this is just a mixture of about a half a cup of water, um, maybe a half a tablespoon of butter and um, a teaspoon or so of sugar. We're gonna be generous with that and just brush that on the top. I just put it in the microwave for like 20 seconds uh, just to melt the butter and get the sugar and the butter and the water to kind of dissolve together. This is gonna give just a nice little crust to the top of the cookie and um, also just give it a little bit more of that sugary, buttery flavor. You wanna to try to do it right when it gets out of the oven so that it's still warm so that all that yummy goodness of sugar water and butter seeps into the cookie and makes it taste better. So they have puffed up a little bit, but they are still just lightly golden. You don't want them to get crispy, you want them to stay soft. Next you're gonna take, once the stuff that you just put on, the butter sugar mix, just solidified and basically is dry, you're gonna take a spatula, can be any size spatula, it doesn't really matter. And you're just gonna quickly put it up and put it onto a wire rack. There we go. Just to finish the cooling process. And then once they're cool, go ahead and enjoy them. These cookies can also be put in the freezer for a couple of months. Um, they do make quite a good size batch. So um, that's another thing you can make them ahead. You can enjoy some right now and put some in the freezer um, to enjoy later. So thank you for joining us today to make our family's Norwegian Kringla cookies. The recipe and all of the ingredients that you need can be found in the description of this video. And now for the best part. <laughs> Delicious. Enjoy. And thanks for watching.